Hello to you, viewer, and welcome to Detroit Comics Party Episode 71 with our special, special, most special guest, Tony Miller. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. How are you, Mike? How are you, Tony? Very good. I was doing better when we were fucking talking for 45 minutes in the alley. That's what I would usually say, what? and it's exactly what? what the audience loves to hear, That's that what, what you yeah. didn't hear what? is way better than what you're yeah, about you guys, to. You guys missed a great show. <laughs> well, we did two great episodes in the alley. We were fucking smoking cigarettes. Like You'll just have what? to trust us. Hashtag. We, all other times, we're so good at hush, hush, hush now. We're, we'll save it for the show. We're saving it for the show. Why did we lose that strength today? You know why? Because Tony is an infinite, un, unex, inexhaustible well of interesting stuff. And that's why we had that feeling that it was inexhaustible. And that's why now we aim to exhaust you. <laughs> Well, I hope you're right. I hope I'm right, too. So, Tony, the last time Tony was on a Detroit Comics Party was during the Snail Zone Detroit Comics Party Dance Party. Mm -hmm. Party. Party. Yeah. Party. And you were doing the visuals with mm -hmm. your um, artistic partner, uh, Stevie, right? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Tell, when like what have you been up to since then? What have you been up? What have you been doing? Uh, well, I think I think to go back to that the last time I was on this for the dance party is uh, during that time we were like taking like like free gigs, but we would do something like completely stupid and experimental every time. And for that, we just like we're like, what are we gonna do? Like we'll just do like arts and crafts type shit with like felt and glitter, and we'll just do that. That wasn't like a, a super incisive read on me and Mike that we would want to see felt moving. No, <laughs> for hours because that's our shit. Well, it, like moving for hours, that it, it didn't do that because like we we like got like ten minutes into doing it and we're like this is not interesting enough to fill time. So we just kind of winged it from there. But yeah, that that's the story behind that, and that's why it was so bad. I thought it was great. And I thought it was great, too. Somebody was like, that's strongly what these guys disagree. do. Yeah. Putting felt on camera and projecting it is what these guys do. We did that once. Yeah, that's, yeah. but I heard it as, that was your shtick. You know what's so huh. good, though? Is if somebody comes in, you roll in to a new situation. You do something so well that everyone else thinks yeah. <laughs> you must do this all the time. Like you must be doing cool felt animation shit all the time. And well, only you. when you tell them later, you're like, nah, like we hate felt. <laughs> we would yeah. never. We don't hate felt, but we don't think it is, it is viable for a like what a three hour long whatever we did. But yeah, like that that's what we do is we put ourselves in a situation that we we do not know what we're going to do creatively and we have like an existential crisis the whole time and people love it. This is cuz it usually does turn out pretty good. That's so good. That's every artistic endeavor I've ever undertaken with any other people involved in it is like you just go. Yeah, you know, Brene yeah, no Brown problem. No says problem. you have to be vulnerable. And felt on public access TV is very vulnerable. Felt is a vulnerable texture. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, uh, like, I found out I didn't. I I didn't. We hadn't really talked at any length before you came on and did that. But since then, I feel like we've talked a little bit mm -hmm. more. And now I know you were not egotistically, but. You were like talent wise stooping to do a free a free <laughs> dance party for a million hours in a row 
where, because your real thing is that you create impossibly complicated and cool, like, interactive art installations, projection mappings, and LED stuff, like, all over the world. Uh, not all over the world, mostly just local. That's and the only world I know about. Yeah, so. the, the world of uh, Metro Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, I, I started out, like, in the local music scene, like, being a fan and, like, trying to find my place in that, and that turned into, like, doing music videos, which is a, a very frustrating because you're dealing with a bunch of people in the local music scene trying to get them to do stuff on a schedule and no one has any money right so that led to me like kind of like organizing and planning and running shows a little bit which also is not sustainable and by you shows you mean like live music yeah shows like that live have a visual component so. yeah well like through doing that i started to like get into like the live visuals and projection stuff just to add something to the shows. And I'm like, this is really fun. I'm going to do this and not do the rest of the planning of the shows because I don't like that part. So now that's kind of what we did for the last couple of years. That's very cool. And, and you like what, like uh, anytime I, encounter the the very just edge of some new like video art or like artificial intelligence technology i go tony tony what's this all about tony have you heard of this that's it's what they're showing now <laughs> can you can you explain it to me how like where are you uh, just online or like in with people you know like where are you existing where that is something that is just in your purview all the time um i don't really think i'm like that up on it but i think i've gotten lucky in the in the path that i've chosen like i i kind of like started out in like like the glitch art analog video scene and that like luckily like kind of got big in the last couple years and that led to like you know me me branching out to try to get away from that and that you know just forced me to experiment with stuff that i don't know i guess i guess it's really just like uh not wanting to repeat myself and just trying to you know keep moving and there's just so much cool stuff to learn that it's, you know, it, that's the fun part for me is just, you know, picking up new stuff and applying what I know from other stuff to new stuff. That's cool. So I, I have a question. This is like a personal question, I guess. But like, I think I have a similar approach to making art or, or like making art related things where it's like. I'm mostly what I want to do is learn things, you know, like yeah. I, I want to make things that are interesting to me and like satisfying to me, but I mostly, I just want to learn how everything works. You know, like I want to, I want to know how it works. How, like, I think there's a period usually though, where like I start learning something and then from that point to maybe where I start feeling comfortable in it, there's a period where I'm like, well, I don't want to show anybody this stuff. Like, I don't really want to show anybody this stuff because this is like my, this is the learning zone. Like, I'm I'm still kind of like, I feel like I'm, uh, maybe I'm just doing stuff that everybody does when they first learn this program or like they, they mm -hmm. first figure this thing out. Like, like what is your, and I, don't, I know it's not like, oh, oh yeah, it, uh, uh, after 10 days, then I start making stuff. There, there's not a specific thing, but like how, when you, when you're learning stuff, what's the point where you feel like you're like, okay, I learned this. Now I feel like I'm making something that is 
really like different or like is worth uh, showing people or like worth putting out as like a to Tony Miller, the artist has made this thing and uh, is showing it as his own work. Like how, how do you kind of decide that? Or like, what are your feelings about that? Um, I think like when I, early on, when I was like doing like music video stuff, it was more, I felt like that kind of held me back. Cause I was like, you know, is this good enough to show people? Is this done? Is this worth doing? And like, as I have moved away from that into more like, stuff in like a live setting i don't really give myself the chance to think about that because like a lot of the stuff is something that we haven't practiced we haven't really tried we're just doing it for the first time live so i like n no there isn't there isn't there isn't that time yeah anymore and that's that's good. Exciting and also sometimes a disaster, but that's. So just like take that whole idea, sweep it aside and say, whatever I'm making. Yeah. Like is we, an experiment. We didn't, we and didn't it's because, practice like, the felt. Because it is yeah. like it's being derived from pure creativity. It will be interesting or like it will be worth sharing with people. Yeah. And I, th I think that's like trusting and yourself and your knowledge enough to not worry about it and just know that it will happen, which is not easy to do, but it's very rewarding when it does happen. Is it, is it also a matter of like saying to yourself, like it doesn't matter if it's not perfect and it doesn't matter if it's, you know, it, it is an experiment. Like by nature, it's an experiment and it's okay if it's, it doesn't have to be a certain way or it doesn't have to be like unassailably uh, unique or <laughs> whatever, you know? Yeah. And I, and I think when you're doing it live, like if it's not perfect and it, and, and if it's not good, it's also, you'll know. <laughs> well, you'll know, you. and it'll also, you'll, it's happening live, so you it's you do it. It's bad. It just goes away. It, you, well, in you the have past to. Times. You, yeah, you have to keep going. Yeah, because you're doing it live. What is it? Do, uh, I guess I'm I'm talking about like if you learn a new skill or like you learn a new like you're trying to learn a new program or like you're trying to learn a new instrument or app or technique or something like that. There's a period where to me, and I'm I'm just asking projecting questions to you, but like for me, there's a period where I start learning about it and everything from that point to a certain question mark point, I kind of feel like everyone who is learning this probably is doing something like this, mm. even if that's inaccurate. And then after a certain point, I kind of go, Okay, yeah, okay, I feel it. I'm just now I feel like the expression flows more easily and directly through this technique or this application or this instrument or whatever. And now it's something I feel like I want to show people. Does that make sense? I understand that. Yeah. Are you were you asking what specifically is it for Tony? Yeah. Okay. Tony? Oh, well, like the live stuff is usually like a, like a VJ type stuff, like live visuals for bands and stuff like that. Usually like in, in conjunction with like a musical component. So it's, it's, you know, we have like our, our standard like VJ stuff, but we try to do something different and experimental at every show. And whether or not that really like is obvious to the audience. You know, it might just be us, like, you know, using a new piece of software, using a new piece of hardware that we aren't very familiar with, but we just, like, do it live, learn live, and just see what happens. I think that's the way to do it. Because I think you were also, like, speaking to, like, when when do you feel like you are 
doing something original with a new yeah. skill. Yeah. And I guess like I don't really like follow like a lot of tutorials for stuff that like I'm trying to learn because of that. I'll just kind of like if I need like some technical problem solved, I'll look for that information, but like I don't like you're not going to complete the exercise to have a completed exercise as the the product. Yeah. Right? Like which you're, is... you go into it going, I'll learn your example so that I can pull out this, this, and this and make my weird thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I don't even, like, like, uh, like, VJ tutorials and stuff. There's something about it. Because I think, yeah, I worry about, like, just repeating what other people are doing. So, sure. like, I'll watch a, like, a lot of, like, music tutorials. I don't make music. But I feel like I learn more about, like, the creative process from that and find ways to, like, incorporate those techniques into a visual space. That's cool, though. That's I think that's a good... I would take that as, like, a positive sign like if i had a a person i knew who was doing that or like a a student who they said that's my way is like i take this thing i learn this thing to make to use all of those techniques in something totally different you know like you, you learn you learn a technique or a way of creating something and then use that in something that it wasn't intended for or maybe not directly you know yeah, and I don't think it's very effective, but it's what I do, and it's what I like to do. So I'd probably be better off, like, following some tutorials and learning how to do stuff the Would right you, way. Would you, though? Because then you'd just be making the thing in the tutorial, you know? Like, nobody wants, yeah. to, nobody wants to end up just banging acid visuals. Yeah. I don't know. That sounds pretty fun. <laughs> 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 to be honest. I just think I'm, 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 I'm appreciative <laughs> Of the crazed learning style, yeah, that you're and describing because I that sounds like when I'm having fun learning something, that's how it's happening. Because yeah, there's there's so much to learn, and there's like right now, I feel like there's there's the there's more stuff to learn emerging than you have time to even start to learn it. So by the time like. If you try to, like, stay up on trends, you never will. But it's really fun trying. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a good way to put it. But I I also think it's kind of bad because it's kind of turning creativity into, like, fashion. Into, like, you mean, like, in a consumable, ever-present spring well of it it's in your I, face, i'm, I'm totally what? ripping off a, a a video i saw today of someone else being interviewed but <laughs> we haven't seen that video <laughs> just say yeah, everything it, that right. person said like if you think about like like the time between like lithography and like screen printing it was like i don't even know but it was a long time it was like years so you had time to really understand those things before the next thing came up and you had time to like figure out like what is this good for what is this like how do you really master this but now it's like there's a creative trend that's like world changing and then two months later there's another creative trend that's world changing and then two months later another one so you never really get like the the, enough time to really like sit with something long enough to understand its full potential can i cut to your desktop so you can just really brutally demonstrate exactly what you're talking about sure okay Okay. here we go so you we had a, a a quick conversation the other day where you showed me a bunch of very cool images and then told me where they came from which is a specific artificial intelligence, uh, whatever, I don't know what you call it, ecosystem or whatever, mm-hmm. that, that creates these images. 
and I, you gave me one of your highly valuable invites to the service, and I couldn't fucking figure it out. So why don't you, can you tell us a little bit about this and, like, what's, what's going on with it? All right, so this is a, a, a artificial intelligence image creation program called Mid Journey that is, like, very mind-blowing and very scary. Uh, you, you basically just type a description of something you want to see, and it uh, it makes it. I typed in grim dark painting of a Y2K New Year's Eve ball in a destroyed city. Yes. And this is what it came up with in 60 seconds. <laughs> okay, so then, like, I typed in dementia. Just dementia, and it came up with this, which is like extremely disturbing. A sad ass painting of mutated old people. But it's also like a like a perfect like representation of dementia and done in like a very artistic way. Does this contain elements of other works? It doesn't. So every pixel is completely original. Yeah. So there's no like copyright issue? No. You can actually see what it's doing. It like maybe only because copyright is 800 years behind this technology. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, like this... I I just feel like like we were looking at that thing that uh Joel's thing with the meat. Yeah. Like I feel like that has like not completely obscured sources. Mm-hmm. Where, just like having a rap beat with a rare sample in it, like somebody's gonna snag you on that eventually if you are uh, earn earning off of it, right? And I don't think that's the case with this because you can, you can see what it's doing as it's like generating it, and it's like it like creates like an underpainting that's like the basic structure and composition, and then it just keeps adding detail, but it's never actually like putting anything from another image into it. Hmm. Wild. I have That's no experience scary. with this software. I didn't, so I no yeah, I, do, I don't really either because I couldn't figure it out and I don't know how Discord works. <laughs> but so you're saying there is a view that you can look at where you see sort of the layers or the yeah, like you'll procedural see the image like forming. generation. Yeah. Hmm. It's so weird. I don't because clearly it is basing the stuff it's creating on a look or like on a some type of source material, but it's I guess just like an artist, it is convoluting that to enough of a degree where it's not a direct one-to-one -one, you took this from here you took this from here you took this from here it's it's way more melded together in a way i guess is that accurate yeah it's it's like someone drawing something yeah yeah that's yeah, yeah. that's what's upsetting about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well i think both of those images you just showed would be good Cover, instantaneously the cover of any sci-fi novel, right? Mm -hmm. And it will be for every sci-fi novel coming out like, <laughs> in the next two years. Yeah. But it, it also makes like very creative choices in a way that like I almost feels human. Like this this next image. Yeah, let me put it back up. your sense of humanity must be so distorted and far <laughs> away from my own that it's unrecognizable. I how do you sense humanity? Cuz I I mean I I think this is like very human because it is like it's based off of humanity. It's it's like a mirror of humanity because it's based off of Images we take, we make, and more importantly, how we organize them and 
label them on the internet because that's what it's drawing from. It's not like looking at, you know, pictures of things and recognizing them as those objects. It's looking at pictures based on how we describe them on the internet. You're saying this is our fault. Yeah, everything's our fault. I'm just saying this is more of an extension of us than it is something outside coming in. I see. Which I I can see that. I mean, if you're sensing a uh, lack of humanity or like a um, uh, sort of like this is a this is a piece of art, but it's made in such a way where like I I'm just talking about. The art that I feel like this is based off of Mm -hmm. is art that even if a human made it, I would not like it. Or or I would be and maybe this is just my like judgmental whatever outlook on it, but I would look at that and go, This person is trying to do something where they'll Mm -hmm. be able to sell prints of it. Or this person is trying to do something where it's easily digestible or like, you know, I, I guess like I'm, I'm just saying like I get what you're saying, but I almost think that it points the finger all the way back on the people whose art it's basing its decisions on. Or oh. it's like that type of art is something I'm not really interested in in the first place. Sure. Where it's like if you're – and this is – probably like a decade and two decades old reference but like if i look at what's the top fucking deviant art or whatever post of the day it probably isn't something where i'm gonna look at it and go like fuck yeah like fuck that's good it's probably gonna be like a cool drawing of like uh like boxing girl with boobs out or with a cigarette or something you know like it's yeah. gonna be something like I, you know what i mean like it's just gonna be it's gonna be something like that like this is at least partially designed in a sort of cynical way to attract people's eye to it or or like yeah to like make sure that it is something that a lot of people will pay attention to and i think like maybe that blame like you said, like that blame should be assigned back onto the stuff that it's based on and not the like a fault of the artificial intelligence almost. Yeah, like any criticism you have for this art, like not hu- having humanity, I think the same criticism is uh, also valid for most like human generated art. Yeah. But some of this is like the AI generated art is pretty compelling and you know that's it's kind of got like the same hit ratio for me as human generated art yeah kind of but i would say in that genre same here yeah it makes me feel like it's the images with a lot of hits a lot of clicks yeah clickable art all mashed together and then look a computer made its own clickable art and it it just makes me feel like as enraged as when we go to the comic convention and it's like whatever we were talking about the other time zombie dad like that's <laughs> like that's a fucking comic that a computer could write and draw and it would be just as good yeah or rather bad well, maybe as the as it really was made by a person and i don't think that's a success for a computer That's a failure of a human, but not a success for a computer. And then it makes me think, if you, like, go stand in front of a Rothko that's taller than you, and I double dog dare you to not feel like you're in a fucking wind tunnel. Like, that's the real shit for a real person. And... I am not enticed one iota, and I'm. I feel like I'm totally like the old grandpa, dad. Like, oh, get off my porch, young whippersnappers with your computers. Like, I have no interest in it. 
Like, it's disgusting. It like makes me really anxious, like, to hear, like, any good thing. Like, how do you... Are you seem like you're in support of a thing that's going to put you out of business? I'm not in support or, like, uh, not in support of it. I just feel like it's, uh, it's here. It's inevitable. The genie's out of the bottle. And... I think it's going to have very good things coming from it and also very bad things coming from it, like any technology. And I think it's it's it's, it's important to try to understand it and try to adapt with it because, yeah, it is going to be potentially, like, changing the art world in ways that could like yeah threaten livelihoods but it could also it's it's a powerful tool for creativity if you make it one like we've used it for some animation work i've done just like generating concept art to like you know get ideas for designs not like directly using them but yeah yeah and like for like textures for like 3d models and stuff you can make some like strange textures that are have never been used before because they're mm. not real. And I, like I think I have the same gut reaction as you do to it like what the fuck is this for? Like who is this for? Like this this can't replace any of the weird fucking fucked up people I know who make comics or anything like that but I also I agree with you too where it's like what are we looking for always when we're trying to make stuff we're looking for what's a weird technique that we can use that makes unpredictable fucked up shit that we can use as the basis for our human creativity you know and I think like I kind of agree with you in in saying like, you know what? Like you could you can hate it and there's a lot of it that I do hate, but also like it's here. It you know, mm-hmm. like it's just like we Mike and I have used like we've used a lot of like it, sort of AI based and sort of just inept direct like translation tools to create, you know, to take text that we wrote and grind it up back and forth through these like different languages. And then at the end, have it spit out something where it is a weird phrasing. Like it is a weird, weird, weird phrasing of something that is something that maybe we would never would have thought of quite but i think like in this case and probably a lot of other cases of this type of stuff it's like to to me and i i think maybe to you i don't want to speak for you but like to to me it's like it creates a really interesting and i think this is what you're saying maybe jumping off point where it gets you to a point where it's created a new prompt but the thing it has made is not complete in itself. Like it lacks something that you carrying that like either feeling or syntax or whatever forward can turn into something that is a truly like resonant, real piece of art by a human. And like, I think like, I just think of like the percentage of stuff that we've created that way we we generate a fucking terabyte of stuff and then use like 10 lines of that text and then use that to like i remember like when we were doing america the beautiful Mm -hmm. it's like we generated ton 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 tons tons of text we read all of it and then at the end it was like what that did was it trained us to, as humans, write in that style. 
And the stuff that we wrote just like straight up off the dome hammered out after like living in that environment for a while and being warped by it yeah. in a certain way. That was what kind of like allowed us to then as humans write something that is like it's way weirder than what we would have written if we didn't immerse ourselves in a psychotic AI <laughs> translation text matrix but it's also it's more personal and more I hope clever <laughs> I guess like then if we had just taken that stuff and gone here's the best parts cut those out and drop them all into this like template or whatever you know um, so I think like the way you're talking about approaching it is really like that's a positive human way of like interacting with that technology i think yeah yeah the way i'm looking at it is like there's this concept of like you know drugs and art and you should write high and edit sober mm -hmm. i feel like this is like kind of doing both at the same time because you know you can generate like a ton of stuff that's you know, you might see, like, little things in it that you like. So you're getting, like, the high part from the AI, like, doing stuff that you wouldn't normally consider. But you're also, at the same time, editing sober. So it's it's a good way to, like, you know, think of things that you wouldn't normally think of. Like, we were talking a couple of days ago about, like, I generated a picture of Mr. Bean. And it was really good. And I was like, maybe Mr. Bean isn't real. And we kind of riffed on that for a while. I probably wouldn't have riffed about the existence of Mr. Bean if I didn't do that. <laughs> so, like, you can, you know, you can, like, use it as a creative tool. If you yeah. just, you know, I don't think I should, like, you know, print off pictures of Mr. Bean and sell them. Yeah, yeah, but it led to a funny conversation where we were making up yeah. like, weird bullshit. Like, I think that it's like, if you look at this stuff as, it, it's just like a really, maybe it's a just a really useful infinite-sided die that you can roll before you make your own thing or something like that. Yeah, to I mean, give it's... you like a random seed to like start your personal thing from. It's like looking up at the clouds and seeing like that kind of looks like a dinosaur. That kind of looks like Mr. Bean. But like more directed and yeah. more like optimized for that specific thing. Mm -hmm. Like the clouds aren't really trying to help you see stuff. But this is. Yeah. I I think pro probably what go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I th I guess for me, like, it's nice to hear that. As an assessment of like artificial intelligence technology, because I think a lot of people, I think. A lot of people who are not artists, the way they describe artificial intelligence and the way they describe all of these things are so horrifying to me and the way they they describe it is like it's it's a direct replacement for people doing the stuff and to me it's it isn't that at all that's all i'm hearing this entire conversation by the way you guys really yeah keep going I mean, if you're, I see, like, if it's replacing you, then you probably, uh, it's not replacing you, me. Well, no, of course not. It's but, replacing the fucking status quo regular people who can only use this software to fucking grind out Wolverine prints to yes. sell at Comic Con at 50 bucks a piece. Yeah. With no interaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No after the fact. No yeah. jump off point. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's just, Click go Wolverine. I need oh we need Deadpool now. Which to me yeah and to Which, me and this like is also what people are doing anyways. Uh huh. Yeah right. With right. their own it, it, bad it's drawings. a it's a steroids for uncreativity mm -hmm. for a person 
who wasn't creative to begin with. Which is, I think, the only reason why I feel like the only people I want to hear talk about artificial intelligence are people who are skeptical of it and people who are using it as just, here's one step in my hundred step process of making an artwork, you know? And, and I think like, j just like every other application for artificial intelligence, if you, if you tell a business guy, you have a machine that does one thing that a human can do. They go, okay, don't need to pay the person anymore. I got the stuff. I got that stuff the person was going to do and we're done. Which almost, it, it's a horrifying like dystopian idea, but also I kind of want to see where that leads those people. I want those people to follow that all the way to the end where they find out that like, uh, like if you just let this thing do everything and you're not guiding it or you're not you you're not taking it as like a part of a whole thing that's happening that it you'll walk with it right off a fucking cliff you know like you'll you'll go right off the goddamn cliff and and like i, I don't know i appreciate talking about this with you guys because i feel like for a lot of if you're hyper focused like business mind or capitalist mind you you are thinking of this as like fuck yeah one less person to pay and it'll do stuff that i can't tell is different from what that person did mm -hmm. and i'm just hoping that that leads to a future point where everyone who can tell looks at that person they go i'm not buying your fucking bullshit anymore it's right. insane and we can go to a point where it becomes even more so insane that it's, like, hilarious or perfect yeah. or, like, uh, exactly right for a time that we don't know about yet. But I feel like a lot of this, or this software particularly, I'm interested in publicly remarking on because I literally have never used it and don't know what it is. Oh, that makes me excited to remark on these two. <laughs> <laughs> I know but, nothing about it. But I don't know anything about what it is. Yeah. I've seen your examples, and we had 40 minutes conversation before we got on the air, right? And it makes me think about, like, like we did America the Beautiful with the uh, psychedelic poetry uh, automatic translation back and forth method, and then edited and flipped and wrote in that style, and that's how the book came up. And, and I feel like and, that has and, a... And then threw all of it into the garbage and wrote new stuff based on the old stuff. But I that's feel like... That's the stuff that's important to me. I feel like that has a connection to, like, Brian Geisen with, like, historic cut-up method. Yeah. Where we're... Maybe we're a step ahead of that in, like, his, historicness. Mm -hmm. Where you'd cut up the paper and you'd see the connections that are non sequitur connections and then you'd either incorporate elements of the non sequitur new composition of the cut up and then you'd use that to trigger your own writing. Like I could see those connections historically like we have some provenance of our creative method but like this seems disconnected. This AI image software. And I, I'm just curious, like how to how to you is it so different than that? Maybe because it produces an a, a thing that is so close to being done. Like the layperson could just generate that first image with the fucking sphere and be done. <laughs> you know what I think of as soon as you say that is like there are people who will sit and read the. SEO fully artificially generated blog post mm -hmm. that is a number like top 10 hit on Google. Yeah. When to us, it is clearly just a cut and pasted whacked out 
collection of sentences that came from a million other like Wikipedia articles yeah. and stuff. And normal people. There's normal people who will just sit there and read the fucking thing and not even notice that it's yeah, generated yes. like that. Which maybe that's to me that's the horrifying part, you know, is that people won't even be able to tell. Yeah, and I think that's definitely something that is it's going to be like it does look kind of done but that is I think a failure of imagination because do more with it like you're cutting up stuff like the, the, cut, the cut up method you're taking you know finished work cutting it up turning it into something else you could do the same thing with this you know Mm -hmm. The book you're cutting from was done. But, you know, no, nothing's done. Nothing's... Art's never done. Because it's, it's kind of bullshit. So just, you know, keep going. That's a, that's a George Lucas quote. Because <laughs> it's Star Wars Day. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, it's May the 4th. Holy shit. So I want to thank Wars you guys for letting me come on the Detroit Comics Party uh, Star Wars special. <laughs> You're very welcome. Huge fan. You're very welcome. You know that's why we had you on today. Yeah, I figured. You even moved the dates around so I can be here on May the 4th. <laughs> we didn't move the dates around, but that's because we're inept schedulers. <laughs> well, I actually thought it was today. Oh, good. Well, what I, mean, what <laughs> so I meant you... to say was... Thanks for coming on time. Yeah, but well, yeah, you had you you like. Can you move to uh, Wednesday? And I'm like, sure. Move. I'm yeah, gonna be moving. I'm gonna be flexible. I love to move. <laughs> yes, I can move that around my schedule. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was coming today anyway, so it was not a big deal. Well, moving it to today uh, destroyed uh, my entire week schedule. So, oh I'm, man, I'm really glad to be here too. So it balances out, I guess. <laughs> It's neutral. I was fully neutral. I'm just happy you're here. I'm happy we're having a fun conversation. Yeah, and like we can get into like the dark implications of this because I the think dark, okay because yeah. th there's a certain point like halfway like about 28 minutes in where I go either this is done or we're gonna keep going and it's been 48 minutes so this is an hour long episode and you have about 10 minutes to get fucking really dark. I mean, I don't think it's, like, it is really dark when you start to, like, think about, like, I bet the porn companies are putting a lot of money into this technology. Talk about displacing jobs. Yeah, uh, see, I don't have a problem with that. Well, <laughs> you, yeah, you, you don't think you have a problem with that, but I think it's, like, a, a societal problem of us just, like, uh, disconnecting even more from actual humanity when it comes to sex. Mm-hmm. When you have like infinite perversion, and <laughs> infinite perversion that can also be like trained based on your interests. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, a slippery I mean, just slope. Live yeah. there for a second. That's fucking buck wild crazy. Woo! <laughs> you know, it gets you know fast enough. Right now, it's that that like image took like sixty seconds to make. All right, so now you speed that up. You know, 30 frames a second, that's video. So you start making video in real time. You speed mm -hmm. it up to like, you know, 900 frames a second. You can start to train the AI between frames. Oh, yeah. Don't get me fucking started on even the very rudimentary thing that's happening in making the smooth motion thing on every television that no one knows how to turn off unless you're yeah. a fucking, like, video professional. Like, fuck all of that shit. Like, I mm -hmm. hate that oh shit. Oh, my God, yeah. It has root. Like, I spent, actually, even in being a, like, video field professional, I spent a year not knowing what was wrong with every expensive TV. Like I did, I didn't know what it was, but I didn't want to watch anything on a nice TV because it all looked like absolute trash. It looks, yeah, it looks like a soap opera. It looks awful. 
And nobody even knows how to turn that feature off. They don't even know that it is a feature. They don't even know that it's happening. And mm -hmm. they're fine with it. And if they're fine with something as like simple as that, and then you make things that can fool them even better, they're not even going to goddamn notice, you know? Yeah. But it, it, it goes beyond even just like fooling them. Like if, if it can train the AI faster than it can than it needs to produce a frame mm -hmm. it can take like you know information from you to adjust the content on the fly mm -hmm. so if like you got like a camera on you while you're watching if it starts to notice signs of you not paying attention it gets scarier it, yeah, it could yeah. like you know take it's take more intense. There's more audio cues. There's connect, more things to make you like keep paying attention. Connect to your it. Apple Watch yeah. while you're watching the horror movie, uh -huh. and it'll track how scared you are, and it will adjust the movie to make you feel how you want to feel. Which the same would apply to porn. At that point, it's like <laughs> I feel like the art, like. I feel like we're almost already at this point anyway, but like at that point where your TV is generating a made up artificially generated like video for you to watch that mm -hmm. has only stuff that you love in it, that the art at that point is ma is like just about fooling the TV. The art at that point is like, we put the fucking Apple Watch on a frog and we made him watch a weird, scary movie or something. Like, his heartbeat is way slower, so the movie is yeah. real scary. Like, you know, like, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's upsetting. <laughs> it's it's upsetting, but also, like, super intriguing. Like, I think so, too. It's like, I, I wouldn't have a problem looking at that, but I think the scary part is, like, we're talking about is, like, the way an art person or like a creative person looks at all of this stuff is very different from how a person who's only interested in kind of like consuming it or only inter or only kind of has been told that their role can be to consume it. Mm -hmm. That's that's the scary part is and and I think I think the same thing about this has been around for a while but just like those 4K uh we added the color in and upscaled it to 4K from this fucking French snowball fight from like the 1800s or whatever. It's like the stuff you're watching in there isn't fucking real. Like, and down to the point where like the resolution is so poor and the person's face is so blurry that like the face you see on the French guy getting hit with a snowball it isn't fucking real. And it's like some of that stuff being presented as like real historical uh, media or like a record of some kind is that to me, that's the scariest part is like because you get to the point where your computer has the power or whatever you're using to interface with media and culture and stuff has enough power to generate or fill in blanks to, to that degree. You, you, it, like you said, it's just, it's just showing you what you want to see or, or like what you will think is the most interesting to see in that scene, you know, whether it, it's real or not. It's showing you whatever, whoever has the power to control it wants you to see is another scary thing because like, it's not, it's not creating something from nothing. It is based on rules created by people. I I started having some of these thoughts, and I think Mike and I talked about this before, but, like, when they came out with, like, the Amazon Prime, like, video stuff, and it had that feature where it tags every actor that's in every scene, links you to their IMDb page, says stuff about their character, and then changes every time the scene changes, like to show which actors are in that scene. Just like the extrapolation of that is 
replace all the actors with whatever actor you want, replace the face of that actor, switch the genders around. But to me, there's a little part of that where it's like, I can think of situations where that would be amusing to watch or like that would be interesting to watch. Like, what if this movie that was supposed to star so-and-so had that person in it instead of who it ended up being, you know? Yeah, like, what what if it's, like, you know, Saving Private Ryan, but it's all Polly Shore, every single character? I That sounds like an amusing, like, transitional period type of thing, but... What scares me is the idea that we'll get to a point where, not that I love Saving Private Ryan as a movie or as an example, but where it's looking at all your search history and browser data forever, and it's putting the putting the actors in and the story arc that will suit you, and it won't be that movie or those people or that thing in any way other than that it's called that and you it'll be so far in the future that you won't even know that such a movie as saving private riven even exist you know where like then that's interesting to me but that's also a fucking horror which i think then we're going to get to the point where who looks at archives who goes to the library us insane hobos kids and academics, right? And I think back to, like, the 1910 Frankenstein that just got remastered by uh, uh, the uh, government library of Congress. When, what, what, we got to see that as a historical document. When could we, when, when are we going to be immersed so much in this like AI um, manipulation of culture that we can't even see that anymore? Mm-hmm. Unless you're an academic who's going to the Library of Congress or gets that like as a, as yeah. a historic object yeah. more than an entertainment thing. I don't know. I, I, I totally get what you're saying where it's like, when, when does your main mode of interface with history and culture become so contaminated that you cannot tell anymore whether Mm -hmm. like something is the original or uh, a different version of the original. And I think like there's every reason in the universe to assume that the way that people interface with what they think is the whole internet will be something like Facebook where it's so like insanely limited everything is being filtered through an algorithm that's totally a uh, you know you you can't see through it that word mm-hmm, that means mm-hmm. can't see through it and like that everybody's idea of what reality is will be filtered through one of those types of websites or one of those types of like the fucking metaverse or right, whatever right. the fuck, oh. you know, where it's like, it's just like, dude, man, I, I just, I don't know. I just, there's so many people already, the you, the world, we have like 30 seconds left, but I'm, I Take just the need last to say, word, sir. the world has disappointed me so thoroughly so far in regards to the internet and how it influences people's interaction with culture that I can only see it getting worse and that's what I think. Agreed. Yeah, it's pretty pretty bad but, you know, <sighs> at least we get some cool pictures. Well, it's been 59 minutes and 35 seconds and I love you, Tony, and I'm so happy you came here today and I really appreciate you thank coming Thank you very on. much. And thank you for showing us such cool, interesting technology. We really appreciate it, even if it just makes us yell and scream yeah, the whole terrifying time. us to the fucking bone. Dude. Yeah, it's, it's scary, but, you know, <laughs> it's here and we can't stop it, so. Thanks, dude. It was very nice having you on and uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Definitely.